Select Board's meeting January 30th, 2018. In attendance, Mr. Moglin, Mr. Didi, Mr. Fox, Mr. Steinhardt, and Mrs. Pendleton. Good evening and welcome to the Select Board meeting for January 30th. Uh, we'll open the meeting with public comments. Anyone has any comments they'd like to make to the Select Board? Now is your chance. If you could just state your name for the record. Charles Dunlap, Emergency Management Director, Thomas Southwick. I'd like to share some good news with you. Last June 24th and 25th, we held our annual emergency communications exercise, and the results have come out. And this past year, we scored 10th between the United States and Canada, and that was better than the year 2016, which we were rated 16th, and we came first in New England. And I want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the residents of the town of Southwark for their support for our training exercise, which is held every year. Thank you. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, Charlie. That's excellent <clears throat> to you and your whole crew. Anyone else? Sure. I don't know whether I should speak now or wait until the 250th, but I'm Lee Hamburg, 48 South Long Road. And I just wanted to suggest to the selectmen that sometime between now and, say, uh, the uh, annual meeting, that uh, you consider putting together a committee for the 250th anniversary, because I know that it's going to take a lot of time to plan and put things together and coordinate <laughs> things. And if you don't do it, time is going to tick right past you. Already working on the notice to do it. Set just talked about Check it your last mail. week. Check your yeah. mail. We already we <laughs> you're <laughs> preaching to the choir. We're on it. In the <laughs> same church, different pew. Yeah, put oh, your okay. name in. He's in charge. I, I would just like to mention, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, that Mr. Hamburger is also a member of the greatest class that ever graduated from Southwick High School. There's a lot of class of 1975. So 1946. Yeah. Oh. So that we great minds think alike. As Prepare. they say. I'll second that. <laughs> oh, and, uh, oh, and, and uh, uh, Chief Anderson also, Mr. Chairman. I respectfully and, and, and as Ronald Reagan said, contrary to public opinion, they were not at the uh, founding of this town of Southwick. <clears throat> Excellent idea. Glad you thought of it. <laughs> sure. yeah. Comes with a lot of responsibility. That's right, Vice Chairman. <laughs> Anyone else? For under public comment. Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, is your candidate here? Yeah. We'll proceed to our 605 career firefighter EMT candidate. Hi, Doug Boglin. How you doing, Joe? Okay, we have a few questions for you. Okay. Uh, we're going to start from my right and go this way. And at the end of our little question session, you'll have an opportunity to ask any questions you have of us or make any statements or whatever you'd like to do. Perfect. Okay? Yes. You like to be called Zach. Yes. Okay. Zach, as you were aware, this is a small department that will be growing over the years to come. Where do you see yourself in the next three to seven years? So in the next three to seven years, I'd like to see myself actually living in this town. Um, currently live in Westfield. And I've seen how we're trying to expand the to a paramedic level and I think that's great. It's better for the community. So any way to help that movement is what I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see myself staying in this area as well and being a part of this department. Okay. So why do you want to work in Southwick as a firefighter EMT? Why do I want to work in Southwick? Um, like I said, I see it growing as a community. The fire department's growing. Um, I also like the area. It's a 
nice rural area. You got the lakes and everything, so um, it just seems like it's expanding and be a good area to live in. Quick follow up. You live, live in Westfield now, Correct. right, Zach? Lifetime Westfield resident? Uh, I grew up in Southampton, between Southampton and Westfield. Okay, so you're from this the, area, the, yes. Okay. Other well, side of the tracks. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> There's railroad tracks right That's through, right Dee -dee. through Westfield. That's <laughs> Dee Dee. Good? All you, sir. All right. So if you just listen to our last minutes for our meetings in the last year, you would have these questions because I think we've already asked them 20 times. So what is your greatest failure and what did you learn from that experience? Um, greatest failure would probably be just getting out of my shell and, uh, you know, not afraid to ask questions, but I get shy every now and then, so that'd be my biggest thing. But, uh, you know, I've taken college courses, public speaking and whatnot, which have helped me, you know, grow through, and uh, also the paramedic course, you really don't have a choice, so that, that helped a lot. And, uh, get so you I, out of your shell. I did break out of it. Yeah. Stuff. Hey, thank you. Quick follow up. So, I think I think that that that's excellent, and I think that that's a um, more of a weakness than a failure. But can you yeah. think of a situation where things didn't go the way you had it figured out, and what was the lesson that you learned from that? I guess the biggest failure would be say. Um, Working with someone who didn't really not get along with, but kind of didn't have the same ideas. But after all, through talking through it, you know, got got through the problem and figured it out. Uh -oh. You don't like that last question, do you? Well, it's just like the greatest failure. Where do you start with that? Could it be because you Dude, beat on your brother when for, he was small? I could small, talk for three hours could it be on because that. You, could you talk, <laughs> well, that's what I realized. Yeah, I could I'm talk with you. for three hours on Three, that. I got a couple that days invested. So it's just a weird question. Like, it, it, do you take it personally or do you take it on the uh, on the business side? And mm -hmm. ah, that guy was a jerk, but I learned to live with him. Or, you know, it's a more of a personal question. It's, it's all over the map, and, and yeah. we've gotten answers all over the map. That's Let, why it's a good question. Yeah, yeah it's a good question. Off the monkey bars once. Hey, See, you know, a little late now. You don't do that no more. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Don't sell past the close. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any questions for us? Uh, no questions at the time. Uh, well, do you guys know if you're planning on hiring more within the uh, close future as to paramedics? Or? Depends on the budget, but the general plan is yes. And we've, as a town, and the chief can speak way more eloquently than I. But we've committed this board and the fire department to go to ALS. And it's a step-in process, right? We have one firefighter paramedic today, correct? We're looking at a second. At some point, there's going to be more as we expand the hours of our operation for ALS and start weaning ourselves off of the mutual aid scenario that we, we work under today. And eventually, you know, it's going to be a, um, you know, a much wider period of coverage in town mm -hmm that we'll have ALS, so by definition, yes. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you could probably add that we also have the support of the Finance Committee, and we have the support of the voters at the town meeting that have uh, we've discussed this, and they voted the money so far. Okay. Yeah. What year did you graduate, Russ? Uh, that's 1975, the greatest class. So what's <laughs> happening is the class of 1975 is getting older. <laughs> you know, they're going to need more of the paramedic level, than the level. So yes, we are headed in that direction. Absolutely. The class of '84, so it's a few years to go. So '84. We'll, '84. So we'll let the elders <laughs> first. Okay. And then I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity, and I hope to work here in the town of Southwick and maybe make a a life here and move here and have a family so absolutely wonderful
Excellent. Do we have any other, anything else for this applicant this evening? No, nope. I think uh, Zach did a good job. I think uh, the chief, you gave him a uh, copy of the bargaining unit document. Yes, yeah, yeah, that was mailed. Handbook and Handbook. all those, so he's got all those documents. That's good. Right. He availed himself to them. Any questions about that? Not at the moment. I read through them, so it's pretty clear. Chief's a good guy. Chief's, yes. At first, for the most part, <laughs> it's right in the handbook. It yeah, says right, right there. Page two. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zach, Zach, uh, having had uh, experience in two other communities, his chief spoke highly of him in those other two communities. That's good. From Southampton. Uh, Southampton and yeah, West Hampton. West Hampton. Yeah. West. Fantastic. Okay. What's the next step of this process, sir? Uh, well, you would uh, make a vote to make an offer of employment contingent upon the requirements that the, the chief um, will put in place. All right. How do we say your last name? Coretta. Coretta. All right, so I'll make a motion for Zachary Coretta to... Uh, like what he said. Like what he said. Uh, second time. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 That's your physical Mr. Coretta? Welcome Provided on. you pass everything else, welcome aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Pass your paper down. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh I saw oh. that. Look at you. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. The chief took off right in time for his fiscal year 18 budget overview. Yeah, we can do the oh, yeah. we can do the okay, so we're going to acknowledge payables warrant 1819B dated January 29th, the amount of $482,365.26. We can look at the minutes from January 23rd. I looked at them. I'll make a motion for January 23rd. You just assume? I'm Second. good. I read them. All right. Second. Motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, acknowledgement of the receipt of the Hampshire Trust fiscal year 19 insurance rate. <coughs> just any action required here, sir? No, they're, just an they're adopted by, uh, we are a member of a trust, so the trust executive committee adopts them and notifies the member units. So they go Which is what we are, so they go into effect July 1st. Um, Treasure Collector will be in them shortly with the other issues, so you can certainly address any questions you have on those with her. Okay. But that's to, just to make you aware of them. They voted everything down. <laughs> yeah, you weren't here. Okay. So unscrew the light bulbs. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to the 615 appointment. Perfect. With the Fire Chief Anderson for his budget overview. Are we doing this first or this first? Let's do the budget first. Okay. The the detailed budget, not the apparatus replacement. All right. Does that make sense? It's okay. Would you rather do the other first? No, 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 no. I just you know had a presentation, but you know <laughs> you want to ruin the presentation. Go ahead. Do that first. We tried to get in and ah, <laughs> Now do whatever you want. You couldn't find a ladder truck? Yeah. <laughs> we looked everywhere, too. So I guess with that said, we'll go back to the fire budget. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I didn't see it in there. Do we have a copy of that in our packet? This? Good. No. Here. Is that the only one to get it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. That thing. Sorry, you're in charge. <laughs> you got it. I'm oh, good. We'll share. I've, I've, this is the same you thing we, we looked at, right? It's right? yeah, so a budget number? Door. Yeah, it was, oh, it, I mean, they're all sent over a long time ago. Oh, a long time. Yeah, look at my driving thing. Right. Look in the drawer. The counter. No, it wouldn't drawer. be on the counter. It's in the drawer. The drawer of the 1975 drawer? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think that's an English bin. I think they're organized too, right? Is his the lowest drawer because he's the oldest? He's closer to the ground. Uh, is that supposed to be where the clerk is? Yeah, well, that's what the clerk <laughs> is. Well, thanks for reading it, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't say he read it. He said he had it. <laughs> Don't I just found it in the drawer. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. No, but 
Here, we'll no? share this one. Okay. We're good. We'll share this one. Um, I've seen it's that. a preview anyways. So That's right. Okay. Go right ahead. So, um, with that said, I'll start with the fire budget. Um, and under um, the first, thing, <coughs> first line item is a new line item that was added was for the addition of a part-time inspector. Uh, currently, we have a uh, person that um, has worked out fine for uh, taking care of those smoke detectors and liquor licenses and things like that. But the, the issue becomes the inspector's position is much more vibrant than that in, in a lot of the things that we do, whether it's their interactions with um, art with the building inspectors, um, new building plans with the planning board, um, it, it becomes pretty involved. And some of the things are we're not doing what we should be doing by statute, whether it be inspecting certain facilities. We're starting to do that more and more, so his time becomes, you know, more increasing. But a lot of it takes back around to review the review the codes, see how the codes uh, interface with building code. Uh, and, and there's some time, um, a lot of time involved, not simply just going out and hitting the button on a smoke detector and making sure it works. So what I was proposing was uh, a part-time inspector at roughly 18, 18, 90 an hour for 20 hours or so. Um, this is kind of a breakdown of... We currently do, in the past year, we've done 329... Um, yeah, 329 uh, permits. At $35 a piece, the current the way we currently do it is $25 goes to the inspector for doing the permit. So we're roughly taking in $11,000 in in fees potentially. This is average because some of them, like an oil tank, comes out might be $100. A smoke detector might be $35. Uh, liquor license, something else. Um, so there's a couple ways to get there, um, but, but typically, if you look at these, these are the listings of um, permits we should be following. Every time something, a new industry comes to town, a new business, these are all the things we should be involved with that we're not. If you look at the second page, you'll see Hadley, the town of Hadley, and they have a very um, depth, deep. Um, inspection process and um, while their numbers aren't high they have tons of business and as we go down the road to our we get more and more business industrial parks start to grow these types of things will become more and more evident in in our needs so there's a couple different ways of doing this there there would be a assigning the money to fill a part-time position roughly twenty thousand dollars there would be B um, try to offset some of that with fees or there could be um, ways to, to to reclassify certain job descriptions within a department that could help offset some of these costs but my goal would be to do this with the least impact as possible let me come back to this or how much training is involved so you need um there's two there's a seat uh a basic class and then there's like a a 40-hour class that needs to the certification that needs to so that I can delegate the authority to do that right and then there's a secondary class that's just coming out now what they call a PO2 which just takes it a little further um, okay. some of them gets into inspections where others start to get into more plan reviews sprinkler systems things like that okay. um, so that's a cursory view of that. Hadley actually has supervised cannon and mortar firing. Gotta have that. You never know. You never know if they're gonna be breached. <laughs> and a tar kettle. Well, they got the river oh. to protect. They're on the UMass board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> UMass, they're actually a very interesting town is that half of the Mullen Center is in their town. Or mo most of the Mullen Center. Oh, yeah. town. Maybe that's where they well, yeah, but it's, That's a, another whole story. Uh, Volunteer salaries goes from seventy-five thousand to eighty-five thousand. Uh, we've seen a twenty percent increase in um, fire calls, but uh, we've, I'm basically increasing that thirteen percent to try to split the difference. 
uh, in that fee. That would be for the, for the volunteer, the call force. As we go down, um, under the, the probably the, everything else is for the most part um, level funded with the exception of inspections and repair. It was, well, it is level funded from today, but depends if I guess if we're talking about the 5% decrease or the 5% increase. Uh, but in my case, you'll see level funded and 5% increase is the same. I'm not going for an increase on the basic budget. I'm just trying to develop an operational budget. Um, the uh, So the next one that's in yellow is the uh, contracts and agreements. And that went from 21000 down to 14000 The reason for that is under contracts and agreements, we've been carrying things that are related to EMS operations. So I pulled those items from there. For instance, our um, software that runs our ambulance billing and uh, the computers of that, things like that. So anything that's ambulance related, I've reduced to the fire budget and I've added a line item that we'll see in the uh, ambulance budget. So now at least the cost centers are aligned properly. Um, our Verizon, our dues, pretty much everything is level funded through, through those areas. Um, under food expenses, we went from 500 to 1,000, and the reason for that was um, accounting has asked us to take anything that used to be reserved for an event, whether we had a fire, storm details, some stuff like that. We would util utilize that, but any coffee, any anything else that we eat, or water that's in the station, she wants that to come out of food, not out of supplies where it used to come out of. So that's why that increased from 500 to 1,000. Um, clothing allotment level funded, the uh, conference and travel level funded, the um, hose inspection went from 33 to 43. That's the cost of our hose inspection, but the difference is we now have, um, we bring in a company that used to just do hose for the 33-ish, but now they do hoses, ladders, nozzles and pumps on all the trucks for, for that that price so um and give us a certified report which is part of the requirements now the uh, minor equipment uh, increases from eleven thousand to sixteen thousand but the flip side of that is minor equipment went from nine thousand to seven thousand and again this was a request from the uh, accounting that things that we used to We've been as we've been going through the year with, with Laura on board. There's been things that um, we were taking out of supplies that she would rather see taken out of minor equipment. So we basically flip flopped, increase one, decrease the other to kind of absorb more things in minor equipment, less things in supplies. Um, oxygen and extinguishers again, level funded. Investigations level funded. Um, Turnout gear, oh, association maintenance, we've been carrying $100 for that, but there's no reason to, so I've eliminated that. The, um, the turnout gear, uh, we from 13000 under the level fund to 213 And basically what that is, is in the past, turnout gear was carried under a, a capital item. And it would be in, it would be out, it would be in, it would be out, and, and probably in larger chunks. From going back through the history, you'd see 20,000 and then nothing, then 10 or 20,000 again and nothing. So what I'm trying to do is include it in the operational line item for three, a set of gears like $2,600 now. So I'd like to get two to three sets always being replaced. Under the, the, um, the other thing that we're doing is we're renting gear when folks go to the academy. And because what happens is they go to the academy, they rip it, they wear it out, and it's sometimes brand new depending on who it is and when they get on. So now I can take and rent a set of gear for about four or five hundred dollars <coughs> and get them through the academy. It covers the code for what it has to be because it has to be under 10 years old and um, put the wear and tear on their gear. And then when I invest in something, it's going to last them a lot longer. So I'm looking for that to increase to help, to help in that process to be able to buy three or four a year. Um, community outreach. Uh, Again, 2000 level funding for that. Uh, the career clothing represents this, the staff we have. That's a contracted uh, line item. And then the last item on there is computer software, computers and computer software for $2,000. We've typically carried that under capital in the past. 
and I just like to again roll that into the um, operational because we're always buying some sort of computer or software every year. Um, so with that said, um, it kicks us into uh, uh, capital budget. And the capital budget, you'll see us uh, $14,000 for facility security upgrades. Basically, this is kind of a lump sum of the building being 17 years old. And we've seen chairs that are worn out, tables that are worn out, uh, our security system, some of the cameras are. Um, do you not have it? <coughs> this isn't really following along with what you're telling us. So I'm just you know wondering. What? Okay. That's probably why. Okay. I don't know why you didn't get them, I guess, is the question. But I, I went over that document with you, so right. I have it. I've seen it. I mean, I'll forward them again. Um, so, um, so anyways, $14,000 for a list of, of things. Our, our mattresses are 17 years old in the bunk rooms. Um, Things like that. There's like a lot of little things that, that kind of add up. Yeah, uh, you're having people sleep over more, a lot more. Every night. Yeah. yeah. With all your restructuring and on call. Yeah. Yep. Um, hose, uh, basically $7,000 for the large, our, our feeder hose or large diameter hose. That's one truck's worth. So last year when we had our inspections, we lost a lot because of its date. Uh, it was. Kind of, kind of like a tire thing. It was a mandatory, oh, it's like 1998 on that one or something. So this is to replace one truck, which helps free up hose for other trucks. And then the last but not least on the fire is the apparatus replacement plan, which um, we know we're, we're talking about the ladder truck. We know we're uh, right around the corner from the ladder truck is engine two. Um, and what we've designed in that presentation that is for you is actually to go for the ladder truck and if not at the same time in the very near future to replace engine two and combine uh, and uh, decommission the rescue truck. So we reduce our fleet by one and the replacement for engine two would be a smaller unit that would uh, be more user friendly to more people, more maneuverable and a lot of uh, cost points that are a lot more affordable than a typical apparatus of today. To review on the ladder truck, the, the necessity of it, that can be a, a presentation all in itself, which I'm sure it will be at some point, whether with, with the yeah, capital, those, those, those capital those and finance. Yeah, the meeting, right, in the joint hearing, so there'll be a better opportunity for you to go through that in detail. Yeah. Um, but we've been talking about these uh, apparatus issues for the last six months between the study having been done and, mm -hmm. and the issues with the ladder truck. So the net result is you'd be acquiring two replacement pieces, but taking three units off them. Yeah, well, yeah, well, replacing two, two, one replacing. offline completely. So if you, if, if <coughs> with the engine two replacement eventuality, this uh, this talks about putting engine two in reserve. Would you actually retire that vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and in that presentation, I don't know if you had a chance to read it, but there's, yep. if we start looking at replacement of vehicles in the schedule that the consultant gave us, then when you start putting uh, three to four percent on an apparatus per year and um, carry that out ten years, then you, you basically this plan saves seven hundred thousand over the course of ten years. So um, while it's 
it's a tough bump right now in the long run, I think it'll, it pays off. Because obviously nothing goes down in price. And then I had one manufacturer tell me the other day that they're, they're carrying 7% increase per year, which is absurd. But. but it it affects a lot of different things obviously it affects how we operate it affects our insurance ratings it affects um, our ability to do certain things flow the amount of water we can flow and uh, all those things which again is a presentation by itself is engine two more of an off-the-shelf kind of truck too versus how you have to custom order the ladder truck the replacement or yeah, the, the existing? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, That's because it would be a commercial chassis. So it would be, you're just building the box the way you want it. Right. Whereas the other stuff, you build the cab you know, yeah. all the way through. Okay. Yeah, we originally started on a, looking at like something like a Ford 550 type of chassis, like a utility yep. type of vehicle that would get out the door, do a lot of things. But then when talking with a consultant, um, there's some reasons they go to the four-door 550s. Is the pump, the drive shaft angle, but what happens is you increase your wheelbase, which actually gives you less maneuverability than going to the next size up chassis. Right. And then typically everybody over puts them overweight, yep. which creates another problem. Whereas if you go from a 19,000 GVW up to like 26,000 for the, the next size chassis. And then the other point is you're still driving a pickup truck that's worth 10 years, 10 years worth of life, not a 30 year old or 20 year old right. fire truck. So, um, so we've leaned towards the mid-size in the, in the committee discussions. Questions on that? I mean, again, I know that's a presentation. No, you took the wind out of our sails pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, aside from the capital, the, um, basically the fire budget represents 137000 uh, 447 the operational with that 98 or the turnout gear and the computers rolled in that used to be in capital and that comes out as a 5% increase over last year if we took that out it's like a 1.7% increase over last year minus salaries um, which weren't asked to be in this any questions on that or? Okay. Um, from an EMS budget Apologize. I wish you. I almost printed more too, but I said, "Well, they already got them." So, <laughs> um, on the EMS budget, the only the, the increase from uh, ninety-five thousand to roughly one hundred and fifty thousand for volunteer salaries. What that is doing is taking our model that we have today, which is roughly annually about one hundred and fifteen thousand uh, soup to nuts under the new plan that we voted in. What I'm carrying is some extra money in there for anticipation of going to medic and being in heaven per diem medics for the night time that we would then have to pay more money for right so it's kind of a, a dartboard at this point but that's a rough math of a 25 percent increase for typically and usually it's 18 to whatever percent on top for a medic type of um, payroll um, so under contracts and agreements uh, in the uh, so again levels funded for uh, radio maintenance the um, contracts and agreements there's a line item of 12,000 for um, what we took out of fire and then the addition of a couple other little things so that um, when we get to the end it'll, it'll level out uh, inspections and repairs level funded or excuse me reduced from 9,000 to 8,000 assuming that with the new ambulance it would help us not have more repairs um, level funding for recertification a reduction in education and training of uh, $5,500 as we start to wean away from um, the assistance we've been getting from our educational folks um, in this ALS transition the in-house staff will start to be taking up more and more of it and we can walk away from some of them and train some of it ourselves so that <clears throat> like I said that's probably a three-year transaction that will get back down to where it was pre-ALS, which I think was 20000 or something like that. 
Um, where am I? Medical requirements, uh, $2,000, that's level funded. The uh, ambulance billing is level funded at 18000 That's strictly a percentage of whatever we bill. So 3.9% um, of what's collected. Correct. So, and I think last year we had a little reserve in that, so I did not um, did not adjust that at all. So the pair, so when we go closer to the paramedic side, that gets billed out. That goes back into the EMT Enter fund, enterprise fund, the EMS enterprise fund. Okay, the EMS special revenue fund. Right. So that we'll see that slowly increase as time goes on. Once so, we get towards right. that level, yes. But that line item will have to go more because if you, once his billings are higher, his collections higher. Yeah. Then that as an operational expense will be higher. So right right now the ALS is driven by the EMD from the from the dispatch. Right. So we're probably seeing sixty to seventy percent of um, of those calls. Yeah. So um, if they are jumping in our ambulance, we're billing we're still billing at the ALS level. So we're yeah. still getting that, and we can look at rates, which you know is a whole different topic for another day. Um, but we're paying out. Two hundred fifty dollars for every call. Correct. So that's where we'll see the biggest increase is the lack of paying paying yeah. outs. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably see a little. We'll our ALS calls will go up based on. All right, I got a basic level call, and now I get there, and now it's an ALS level call, so now it trips it up, which we wouldn't have called otherwise. That that'll happen. You know, I can start an IV. I can do something that I wouldn't have called somebody to do. Right. Excuse me. So yes, we will see some increase, but the biggest part will be decrease in outside costs. Yeah. Um, minor equipment level funded, eighty-five hundred. Supplies uh, level funded at ten thousand. Oxygen again level funded. Insurance premium, I added five percent to it. Who knows? Well, yeah. What happens is as you. Add career people on that has to be adjusted, mm -hmm. and they never time their adjustments with our budget. <laughs> no, um, because they're due to give you something, aren't they? Yeah, because I think we were scrambling last year at this time or a little later, and it was like pulling teeth. Uh, medical supplies, uh, level funded at 18,000, uh, and personal protective gear, uh, again, level funded. So the long and short of it is between both the um, the FY18 fire and EMS budget was at 266,775. The FY19 budget comes in at 281,295, or a five percent increase, including those capital items that were in the fire side. And again, if we if we don't, the combined budgets are at 271 and change, or a 1.75 increase over last year. And again, this doesn't relate to contractual with salaries right. that wasn't asked for. So. Questions? And there is no capital for him. Um, the captain, I noticed you've, you've reposted the captain position. We've reposted the captain's position uh, both in a New England Fire Trade magazine newspaper. Uh, their website, we did a selection, or we did a, um, I think it's the Worcester Telegram or whatever the Worcester area for the Sturbridge, Worcester, all that Auburn area. Um, that was two Sundays ago. And I've, I've yet to see a response from that, per se. So that's been a um, disappointment in that we're not seeing more response from that, that position. Yeah, so we may end up having to restructure the part of that fire department budget to save some money in some places and add more money to the administrative captain <clears throat> and EMS coordinator in other places. I mean, kind of what I'm hearing back, a couple different reasons, but somebody that's established in a, an existing department that's been there, like I think we were looking for five years or so with some super, supervisory, is pretty well established and they're looking at working their way up the ranks within where they are. And with their medical callback, and they're making pretty decent money. So, getting someone to want to leave that could be you, you need that person that needs to move back this way, or right. you, you know, something like that. Um, and so far, 
you know, we've had one or two that I'd be interested in interviewing, but more that I wouldn't than, uh, than we would. I, I think we should have a decent pool of candidates to hmm. the right have the right options. Any questions? On the <coughs> sorry, on the inspection piece that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, so that net will end up bringing some additional permitting money into the town for inspections we're not doing today, or that we we could be should be doing today. Correct. So that revenue could grow. Kind of hard to pinpoint to what, because mm. um, you're you're in some chartered, uncharted territories, for the most part. And there, now some of that could help out because the building inspector has gone to an online system, and there might be things within that that I haven't looked at it real hard yet, but there might be things in there that flag for fire approval that's not in there right now. We just get a set of plans and hey, take a look, you know. But we we need to develop our own checklists and. and uh, you know, going over like what they have to, as a plan review means something, not, yeah, it looks good. You know. I'll give you my quick two cents. When I built my place, bought the plans in, I'm not going to say who, a great bunch mm -hmm. of guys, that you just said, yeah, it looks okay. Yeah. So then the, the alarm system, people came in to do everything. You got a permit? <laughs> no, permit was fine, but yeah. uh, like $4,000 later, because the good guys might have missed this, that, this. Because like you said, everyone's great intentions. Right. But unless you have someone that really does it all the time, it, it's a tough it job. It gets missed. It's a tough job. Yeah. Um, and it, it's always changing. The codes it are changing. Is. Um, so both. Think, there's been a lot back and forth between. All right, now that's under the building inspector. That's under the fire. Then they right. do this. And the, I think that's how it got caught. The building inspector caught it and said, "Oh, I think yeah, this I mean, isn't right." I have to say, uh, Art's been a great asset and yeah. great to work with. Um, he had a building full of people today at our place for something about knee bracing or something but um we love working together and yeah you know to benefit each other so. there's yeah. definitely a need yeah <coughs> any other questions no it's, it's a good review so far yeah i apologize I'll, I'll get you copies of those with uh, Although it's kind of a neat idea to not give you a budget. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That won't work with finance. <laughs> we just all look dazed and confused. The radio's going, I've come in all kinds of stuff. This is good joke. What are you doing? <laughs> it's all good. All right. This is really about big ticket items. So as we move forward, yeah, we know. Yeah, I mean, the operational budgets are pretty much, you know, last year, obviously, we did, we added two positions. So that was a, right. big, a big hit. Um, but this is also, you know, this this thing is also an operational, organizational type scenario. So it's good to get in front of that early and yeah. start laying out how you want to run the department next year. And, and as far as the apparatus, whether you know how we if we do it, in quick piecemeals or lump sums, or that's obviously the powers to be in financing and bonding and all the other parts that come involved in it. But it is, and I know you guys. Um, I'm preaching to the choir as delays only cost a lot of money when you're talking the expense of some of these things. So um, I think I can justify the need. Well, it's just how do we get there from here? Right. When do you submit that other uh, grant authorization to f remember the FEMA where you're trying yep. to get an offset on the ladder? Yeah, it's when, already in. Oh, you've already submitted it? Yeah. Okay. That closes uh, February 2nd. Then they start their. Okay. Their so process. That'll be good to see where, how that materializes. And the only other thing that was in the papers that you didn't have was the um, uh, the air compressor. I listed it as under the five year plan, but I'm not putting it in for this year because I went for it for the grant. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't fund the annual grant. Right so. Is that the same with the ladder truck? Can so on a, on the ladder truck, um, which we will call apparatus replacement. Apparatus replacement. Um, we're going for partial, right? So we still have to go to town meeting to get our part, right? So those numbers may change if we don't get the num if the grant, or they might change if okay. we do get the grant. So it doesn't hurt but having the grant and still moving forward. Usually, yeah. no. right. usually the article is like up to, yeah. So you can yeah. it gives the town flexibility to go under. Yeah, it authorizes you to offset the price of it with the receipt of anything. Which I, you know, and in my grant, I did. Um, 
expressed it. Obviously, we're we're putting money towards it, and right. um, so we still have to go forward with that. Their timing couldn't be worse. It's May season, you know, as yeah. far as getting results. But yeah, okay. timing's early this year too. May fifteenth. Yeah, so the government, you're never quite sure how that grant process, the opening of it got delayed because of the hurricanes, because it's under FEMA. So anything like that can delay, shut down a government can delay. Sure. Or, um, so don't become a sanctuary city. The year well, we're using the one we have that's 30 years old. Yeah. We've had it rebuilt a couple times. But, um, but the grant you put in for what's for that? Not, same grant. Same oh, that period. same grant. Same, okay. So we should know by... July for sure. July. So, if not, we'll we keep using ours till it st blows up or dies and addresses that. And then what's, what's the approximate cost? Sixty thousand. Sixty. Yeah. So, I I think we you know it's thirty years old, so I think we'll, it'll be a high priority for us. Um, you never know; it's a competitive grant, but um, I think we'll score well on that. Hmm. I hope. Well, we got the first half. Right. It only makes sense, right? Yep. 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 Well, and the other good news was on the on the motor. On the motor. So that's yep. that's good news. Proceeding as as is with it and Yep. We'll see what happens. I mean, it doesn't get us out of the woods, but it buy, hopefully buys us a little time and saves us a little money. To, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was oh, huge yeah. news. It's not so it's not useless money, you know. Right. I mean yeah. It's, it's not not looking good to spend that kind of money to be status quo. <laughs> right, but we were staring down a barrel hard at that. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. So I appreciate you working with us on that and getting that yeah, in a better spot. So. Okay. Okay. No. okay. No. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much, Chief. Make sure you take your ambulance with you. Okay. Yeah. I think I have one like this. Yeah, we got one for you last squeak? year. Does that squeak? When you press on it, does it squeak? No. Yeah. No. Not yet. No. That's just a stress in. Where's Randy's <laughs> gifts from last week? Where did oh, it's in my truck. I'll get it for you. I have it. I meant to swing it by. I had it last week. <laughs> no. 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 No, no, no. No. We couldn't. No. All the ones at the trade show had all the axles, so we didn't get those ones. Yeah. It wouldn't match. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um, oh, man. Jess has got a first interview person. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. TCC. Yeah. Hi, Mary. Yeah. No, no, no. That's your, that's your section. Yeah. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you? Get caught back up here. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Good. For those following at home. <laughs> we are at the uh, 640 <laughs> <clears throat> TCC office clerk candidate. So that's not the paramedic. Oh boy, how do you pronounce your last name? Borgals. Good, I didn't mess it up. <laughs> Okay. Do we have questions? This is Mrs. Meet and Greet. I see. Okay. So you have applied for this position, and we have three, right? Three finals. Any questions, comments, concerns? I was just going to say, since we don't have the questions, if Mary just wanted to tell us a little bit about herself and why she wants the position. Okay. Well, um, my husband and I moved to Southwick about 27 years ago uh, to buy our house and raise a family. We were from Connecticut. We found the taxes to be a little lower, so that's what intrigued us to come here. Still? We bought it, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have no complaints. Um, and, you know, originally we had even thought maybe we would just buy to invest sell and then move back but after we stayed here for a while we really enjoyed the town and we, we loved raising our kids here um, I, I worked at, I mean if you looked at my resume I, I've worked in several different places in office administration is where my experience mostly lies I stayed home to be a stay-at-home mom and raise my kids for a few years 
Um, and now they're grown, and nothing's distracting me. Except my husband sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I am looking to be full time. It, it would be great to work in the town and serve the town that I've grown to really love and enjoy. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Sir? I'm thinking of a number one through seven. What is it? One through seven? Yeah. Seven? Hmm? Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joe Deedy. D E E D Y. He'll be here all week. Yes. Try the view. Was that or what do you bring to a right? potluck? <laughs> you know? That was one or the other. So. What was your favorite? Um, you got a copy of the employee handbook. You, you I did. I brought it just in case. I didn't want it. I you you familiarized yourself with the yes, content. Yes, right. Any questions based on any of that? I do not. Oh. Um, no. And I was told more than once that it is a union position. Yes. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> I just wanted to confirm that. The handbook seemed to suggest it was more for the non union employees. But um, I also That's did. Very good. Is there anything you wanted to add? Anything further you needed to add to this? You've been at uh, Springfield Rescue for almost six years? Yes. I actually recently just sort of left there. I say sort of because I'm still there volunteering and helping, but I actually did take another job, and I just started like six to eight weeks ago. Um, and it all was timing. I had gone on a trip. I had gone overseas to Rome and Israel. Came back, saw the posting in the paper um, just before I was getting ready to start the new job and said, I'm going to apply. So I've applied and um, I like where I'm at, but I'm in Bloomfield, Connecticut, so it would be nice to have a shorter commute, have better benefits, and be full time. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and sorry you had to wait longer than the actual interview no, took. Right. Yeah. So. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank nice you. meeting you. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for time. Nice meeting you. Good seeing you. Good seeing you too. Oh, I thought we can pronounce this. Thing. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. This is going to be a very informal discussion. Um, we usually, we're not going to ask you a bunch of questions this time. Somebody's done that already, right? Yes. A lot. And a test. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Art contest. There was the whole thing, right? Yep. Okay. Joe, I feel like you've been at school. You want to go for the yeah. number? Or? <laughs> Be consistent. No, no you're all I, set. I got something else I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, Mr. Fox. I'll do the same thing I did for Mary. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Emily, and uh, why you want the job, and if you're related to the Duns of Southwick. I am not okay. related to the Duns of Southwick. <laughs> okay. Um, my parents grew up in Northampton. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Um, maybe distantly. Um, so something about me career-wise or? Sure, um, sure. So I currently work for a credit union. Okay. Um, I've been there a little over seven years. Um, I like dealing with customers um, very much, um, you know, handling different situations and having them leave helped um, and feeling good about what they, whatever they came in feeling bad about, I like to make <laughs> them feel good when they leave. Well, that's good. So how do you handle, I mean, that's great where you work and it's beautiful and people are taking money out and bringing money in and people are smiling and you give them lollipops and the dog biscuits from the dog. So here that doesn't happen. Yep. Here they're miserable. they got to pay their taxes. They're, <laughs> they're, all, they're well, never happy. They're never, happy. they're never happy at that window. And how do you feel about, how long will it take for that edge of that warm, fuzzy feeling to kind of just go away? Um, it hasn't at my current job. And, yes, but that's and warm and fuzzy. Bills. They're paying yeah, bills. Yeah, that's different you know, though. They're making like point five percent on that money. You know, <laughs> that's a good day for them. You know, here we're asking for money yep. all the time, and they're and they're upset when they walk. You know. Yep. You get twenty five people a day in. I'm gonna say six have an attitude. Yep. Without a doubt. Yep. 
Good, good marker? Good marker. So, you know, they, they can, quite honestly, they can beat you down pretty good here. Yep. You know, and then you're in the public sector and you got to smile and um, uh, there's one there I didn't know would even make it, but they did. I, I don't know how. Um, because I just didn't think, you know, they had the wherewithal to get punished every day yep. by people. And you're okay with that? Yeah, I'm pretty used to it. Got a little Depending brother, cost, older sister. I have a little brother. Okay, and so yes, that, that helps. It's kind of, yeah. you know, repetitive. Yeah, no, but it's <laughs> same stuff. Yeah, just being honest. You know, yeah. it's, we did, we had these discussions. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's, and it's, I, there's nothing. I worked on. No, I know, but prior to the credit union, I had worked at Stop and Shop. Oh, there so you go. And I worked behind the customer service desk, so right. that was a lot of you know people come in, they're screaming at you. Yes. Trying to receive a Western Union, they can't because they don't have an ID. That's a fun conversation. Yeah. I'm not even gonna go there. But, okay. but yeah, no, it's something I'm pretty used to. Um, yeah. It's a tough of, job, yeah, even though yeah. it's, it's you know there's nice, pretty windows there yeah. and you got a nice view. Yep. It's a tough job. You got you to build a, a little thicker skin. A lot thicker. Yep. Okay, I'm done. Jess was six two when she started. Yes. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> She was trained by the rent. Yeah. And came the from rent. the DMV, right? Which, yeah. which, yes, which was a so. huge help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to top that. I, no, I, I, just, I just can't. <laughs> you know. Okay, pick a number one through seven. Uh, five. Okay, thank you. Right. I've asked my questions. <laughs> February, March, April. Yeah. Okay, just checking. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> anything else you'd like to add? I, I don't really have anything else to add other than, you know, I when I'm learning something new, I try to grasp all realms of it and how it affects every aspect of the job, including the next job, that whoever's dealing with the task after me. Just try to make it as easy as possible. So you know how to multitask? Yes. Oh, very much so. Yep. Juggle. <laughs> Even better. And she can juggle. That's but just, it's not on the resume, but no. we'll note that for future. Yeah. Yes. So and one last comment. What did you think of the interview process? I really liked it. I thought it was very well done. Um, I liked that, you know, we did the initial interview and then came back for the testing. Um, I thought that was great. Must have done well. You're, you're here. Yeah. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all we have for you. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Nice thank you. you. This is going so well, we're going to be caught up. We should have had five people. I'd have been ahead of schedule. Okay. Monica. This is Monica James. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, this is going to be very informal. Um, sir? I'm going to start off the same way I did with the other Good idea. applicants. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you like this job. Um, uh, I'm currently working at Westfield Bank. Um, I, and I, I've been in the Southwick branch for a while, and I really enjoy the, um, the, ta the customers that come in, the residents of Southwick. Um, I really like them. Um, I enjoy handling money. It's sometimes a challenge with the numbers and stuff, but I really, I really like um, that aspect of it. Um, and then personally, I just like to spend a lot of time with my family, hang out with my dogs, stuff like that. Good. Yeah. And you're a lifelong Westfield resident? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know the area? Yes. Good. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Mr. Deedy. Hey. So your time at the American Inn, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. um, I was working there as a waitress. How'd um, that go? Really good. I liked it. It was really rewarding. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed working with the elderly community. Um, I grew up like very strong bonds with a lot of them. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. But how did you like working for Don? <laughs> <laughs> Don was really funny. He was kind of hard, but he was a good boss. I liked him a lot. He's a good guy. Yeah, he really is. Mm -hmm. So of course here it's you know they're not they're not as nice when they come through the door because of their issues with taxes or mm -hmm. 
the dump sticker that uh, people feel they shouldn't have to be charged for mm -hmm. a dog license that they forgot to get updated. Yeah. So they're miserable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how does that how does that play out with you? You know um, what I mean? Because I could be miserable. Yeah. And the reason people think I am when I come to that. <laughs> um, so does your smile go away? Is it, how tough is your skin? You know what I mean? It's, like, it's pretty tough. Um, we run into a lot of situations like that at the bank. Um, a lot of people get charged and they think it's not their fault. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but um, you just have to take everything with a grain of salt. You keep the smile and um, empathy is a big thing. With customers, you have to understand where they're coming from. Um, and you have to make sure they know that and um, restate their um, their concerns and answer any questions you can. So I'm at the window, I'm miserable, I'm not happy with what you want to tell me. What is your next option? Um, I would ask a supervisor to intervene if I didn't think that I was capable of handling it. Um, I would do my best, but sometimes it's best to just bring somebody else in. Yeah. I'm thinking of a number one through seven. What is it? <laughs> Four. Thank you. Anybody got close tonight? Or? <laughs> I haven't figured one out myself. <laughs> Just, you, you know, you got to break the ice a little bit, you know. Okay. So that was my theory, you know, and, and it's, it's a tough job. Is like I told you, the windows are beautiful. There's a beautiful view of the parking lot and another bank. Mm -hmm. um, but the people generally, 6 out of 25 are miserable when they walk through that door. Yeah. And they're upset. They mm -hmm. didn't like the bill they got. Mr. Fox might have upped some fees on them. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, the clerks have this position where they do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So people just get, they're, they're, ag they're agitated. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And you're the first firing, you know, they let it all go, whether it's sacks of pennies because they're really mad. Yeah. You know, it, it happens. Yeah, we and get the same thing. We're like the front line being yes, tellers over there. So and it's, it's a tough position. It, mm -hmm. it's, as cute as it sounds and, you know, it's like in this town, it's a stepping stone, really. That that desk is where they a lot of kids start mm -hmm. and move up over the years. But yeah. it's a tough, tough spot. And if you, if you emotionally aren't there, you don't last. Yeah. But you're fine. Yeah. You're ready to go. Yeah, I'm definitely up for the challenge. <laughs> You're at this, the Westfield Bank right here? Yeah, I started there part-time, and then I started um, floating as a full-timer. And then um, the senior teller had a baby, so I've been filling in for the senior teller since um, November. So I've been there pretty much almost a year. I floated for a couple months in the summer, and then ended up back there. Full disclosure, I think I was lucky and saw her take it with both barrels from an angry customer at Westfield Bank. <laughs> she did all right. Um, what did you think of the interview process? Um, I liked it. Uh, I feel like I always leave interviews and I'm like, oh, what just happened? <laughs> you know, they're kind of overwhelming, but um, I really liked the second part. I wasn't expecting it to be more of like a test. So I went in there kind of prepared. Um, I reflected on my answers, and I reflected on the things that they asked me, so I was prepared for that. And then when I got in there, it wasn't what I prepared for, but um, I think I handled it really well, and um, I enjoyed getting a taste of what I would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think the, the ladies were really clear on everything. Um, they were very like informative on the job and everything that has to do with the union and um, they gave me the packet, um, the handbook and so I think I was like fully informed so I enjoyed that because you don't get that a lot on interviews. Excellent. Cindy, you took the test too, didn't you? I took it first. Yes. <laughs> I did pass, by the way. I was going to say, wait, you're not, wait, wait. Is there a 705 I didn't know about? <laughs> yeah. We just did it to make sure everything went smoothly. And it did? Yep. Fantastic. Do you have any questions for us? Um, I don't think so. Not at this time. I can't think of anything. Got to think of at least one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> one question. Okay, okay. One through ten. What number? Seven. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> You gotta be that quick around here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. That's all we have for you this evening. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet nice you. To see you. Nice to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you. Oh,
just for the record, I always smile when I'm over there because we have a great staff, and it's it's I don't mind giving up my money. Well, no, I, I apparently that, it's about the right percentage, right? One third, right, is I rate. Yeah, no, I, so, yeah, I'm yeah. fine with that. So you can continue continue on in that role. I will never just, change. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, I can promise Russ you. and I will smile and say hi and you can do that. And you, I'll, and you, I'll come you back with, I'll come with the boom. <laughs> right. Not a problem. <clears throat> Until the board reorganizes in May and then maybe we'll change roles. He'll be happy. I'll be angry. We'll see. No? Maybe? Sure. Okay. Can I ask Michelle, is there in the process, is there, was there a Pecking order of sorts, or I, I don't know what the. How do they score? How's that? Is that the best way of saying that? Is there three copies? Or is there just one? I don't know. Like I'm just fired. with nothing. Well, they're trying to save money. I guess so. Yeah. So we did. We did a testing. Um, we revamped it from the last time we did a testing, and it was really more in detail. And again, Cindy took it for the first time, um, and she did, you know, fairly well. So in the ranking of the testing, um, it actually went the last one that was here, okay. then the first one, and then no, I'm sorry, the last one, the second, second one, and, and the first one. So basically, backward order as far as how they took the test. Um, she had it all right with attention to detail to everything. These other two did a lot right, but there was a lot of attention to detail that was overlooked. Um, so that's how the ranking was based on that. Um, they all did well in the interview. Mm -hmm. Carl was in, at the, in with the interviews. Um, but my recommendation is... Right. We narrowed it and we narrowed yeah. it down to three. You know. How many did you interview? Eight? Eight, 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 eight to eight. eleven. <laughs> yeah. Eight to eleven, we, we had thirty-nine two applications. Yeah, two different... So. Um, Do you feel the pool was... Better or worse in years past? Um, <laughs> well, less. Given well, less people, of course. Yes. But do you think the talent was higher, lower? Overall, not in any oh, industry. Oh, <laughs> overall, I would say yes. It definitely was a stronger, stronger, stronger batch. Yes. Okay. Uh, and especially given the fact that we really tightened the, the test to be a little more detailed um, oriented and more computer aided based. Um, that really uh, showed us, and we got three good ones out of that. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. You want to carry this then? You want to take care of this now while Michelle and everyone's here? You know, this has been, so this is for a position that has been open for quite a while. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's not a new employee, mm -hmm. uh, structure-wise. This is the desk to the left. Back filling. Oh, I'm just back filling it in. I'm sitting in the office looking out, desk to the left. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm ready to make a decision if you guys are. I just soon take it up later. Okay. We shall. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next item is appoint assistant TCC per Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 19, 39A, and most importantly, 39C. <coughs> we have a letter here from Michelle Hill. Thanks. January 22nd, the Select Board authorized the reclassification of one union position to move into an assistant. Treasurer, collector, clerk position, leaving one union clerical position. As a treasurer, collector, clerk, and department head to the position, I represent to the board the desire to use upper mobility to ask Danielle Zaring be appointed to the new assistant TCC position. Over the last few years, Danielle has proven her ability to drive and drive to learn all the skills in the office to be successful. She is energetic, polite with customers, displays attention to detail and extremely motivated to learn more. With the challenges the offices face, Daniel rose and above the expectation of a clerical position and always available to help when needed. With the reclassification was the need to streamline experience and poison the position for the TCC resulting in longevity for the office. And there's a section of Mass General Law, 
section 19 here regarding the town clerk may in writing appoint an assistant clerk, etc., etc., and 39C. I don't have the cover letter. What's up? I didn't have the cover letter. I just had the fire chief made our whole packet. Come on. Oh, here you go. Pass that down. Yeah, it was in his draw. In his draw. In his draw. Cool. Can we spell it? No. <laughs> I take it back. This was in the drawer. It wasn't attached to this. I thought it was right, right. I thought. That's why Doug has the motion word at the way it needs to be. I do. I do. Thank you. The post it. The post it. Ah. Yeah. The thing that I took off with the paper. Paper clip. So I need a motion to vote pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 1939A and 39C to approve TCC appointment of Diane Zerig as Assistant TCC. I'll make that motion, but can I just clarify something? Absolutely. Okay. So what this does, Michelle, is takes... In theory, you would have a, still an open clerk's position if this goes through. No. 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 It reclassifies one of the two union positions, takes it out of the union pursuant to the contract. Right. So it leaves it unauthorized. Right. So you technically still had two union positions. We're not going no. to. No. One is going away. One is going oh, it away. is going away completely. It's going away. Okay. And we'll revisit yes. whether that's part time down the road. I'm just trying to clarify. That's in the budget. Right. Well. Right. Okay. Yes. You're starting right. out with four FTT, four FTE, and you're ending with four FTE with this. Yes, and I was just trying to right. clean that up so everyone changed. in the audience understood. Nothing more. has changed with full time. Right. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I screw that up, but go ahead. All right. And I, I just want a clarification because you know when we voted on this last week, it was brought to my attention that we had discussed at previous meetings that we would address this issue in the budget process. So we have a good working relationship with the Finance Committee. So uh, I reached out to some of those people because there was some concern because I guess the liaison went back with a, a positive recommendation but wasn't at the meeting uh, for the discussion. So, okay. so uh, I, I talked to several members of the Finance Committee, explained what exactly was taking place and the reasoning behind that and uh, there was money in the budget, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's basically a personnel decision. Uh, and I think just to emphasize some of the things we hope to achieve by doing this is addressing uh, the needs of special elections, because that's something that's going to continue to grow. We had talked about the possibility of maybe some nighttime hours. We talked about... Uh, uh, the ability of people to be able to sign and specialize in certain areas like elections and et cetera, et cetera. So right. sign off, sign off some certifications. Right, right. Very important. Be because things have become more complex, particularly the elections. And, and uh, as Michelle is working on tax titles uh, to make sure that. Uh, uh, well, you know, you really, you really haven't looked at the structure of the office and its ability to respond. Uh, to the future and be positioned for current day needs for over 30 years. So this is actually a step in the right direction. Right. I but I, I just didn't want anyone to think that we kind of went back on what we said, that, uh, you know, I, I think we had an opportunity and we took the opportunity uh, to address, address a concern. And uh, we will, as Michelle said, we'll be going over other things uh, with the Finance Committee during the budget process. So. And uh, I think we can address any any concerns that might arise at that time. That's all, Mr. Chair. Perfect. Well said, sir. All right. So we have a motion on the floor and a second. Correct. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Do we need to sign anything here? No. I'll uh, I can, I'll do all the sign ups based on your vote. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.
And Mr. Mose and I will continue to smile when we see you. <laughs> Like Until I'm the board reorganizes in May, <laughs> and then we may change roles. Well, we'll we will be changing roles. <laughs> well, we, no, but we may change who's <laughs> smiling. Oh, okay. No, I don't care about the smiling part. You can keep that. No, I, I get that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Doug, we might, might want to mention to the Treasury Collective we did acknowledge the receipt of the fiscal year 19 insurance rates because uh, that was in an earlier item. We did that. Yep. Okay, review Pioneer Valley Planning Commission Joint Transportation C project list. So it looks like they're starting their 19 to 23 tip. Can we ask uh, the DPW uh, director uh, if Dick is going to be riding a herd over a lot of this, Randy? What's that? Yeah. Pioneer Valley and their um, the oh, tip. Just, yeah. tip. Well, we've got uh, one two projects. Potential projects because we've talked about several years, which is the beginning of the road phase two. Okay. Project. That's the only one I'm submitting here. Okay. And this is something we'll continue to work with our sister community of Westfield on that bridge. That yeah, no, all, affects all, our all the area communities. The, the board endorsed the, uh, the appointment of uh, Brian Sullivan as our area representative. Okay. Uh, on the JTC. Uh, the next, uh, then the next item is, it says ratify, but I actually uh, held this. This was brought to my attention last week, and uh, I didn't sign it because I wanted to add some color to it. Um, and present it to the board for their consideration um, only because there was some um, prescience on this, I think, if that's the right word. So I got a call from the conservation coordinator last week asking me to send them a letter of recommendation regarding a New England Trail Accessibility Improvement Program grant that they're applying to, um, applying for, um, from the Appalachian Mountain Club's grant application. To, I think it's the National Park Service. But anyway, um, this is regarding the bridge that was put in behind Rising Corner. Uh, the parking for that area is near Rising Corner. And the it's a supposedly floating bridge that was constructed over a bog. And... Um, there was commentary back at the time that the expense of said bridge was um, expensive when it came in front of the uh, Community Preservation Committee, but the Community Preservation <coughs> Committee did pass the project forward. It did get voted on at town meeting and passed the town meeting, um, but there was commentary um, as to why the bridge itself had to be handicap accessible when it was quite a distance out into the woods over a bog, um, which drove the cost of said bridge um, much higher. And w there was commentary as to um, future requirements or future endeavors to, to make either the parking area access way to said bridge would need to be accessible and or the entire Appalachian Trail um, to be accessible from the other side of the bridge. And lo and behold, this is a grant request um, to make the access way from the parking area, I believe, to the bridge um, accessible. So hence why I didn't want to si just sign this and then have to come back to you gentlemen for yep. ratification and get skewered in the public. So I'll open this for discussion. I'm at a loss for words. So they want to they want to make it ADA compliant parking lot slash spot up to the bridge so they can get to it. It says or I offer strong National Park Service support. I don't have the entire grant application. Right. Um, and actually it's not to the it was to uh, who's the grant granting agency is in the state. Yeah, it was another nonprofit, right? I think it was well, the Appalachian Trail folks, right. but it was to D, is it DOR? Not DOR. D -O no, D -D 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 DCR? DCR. DCR, sorry. D -C -R. I misspelled DCR. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
proposal to transform a segment of the New England Scenic Trail at Rising Corner Trailhead into an accessible trail. Right. And since you had got this, they had extended the, the grant application, I think, and be submitted on the 15th or something. So there's time. There's a little right. bit of <coughs> You know, you're not up to speed on this where you feel like you're... Um, I think we're can make a decision. You can have um, Dennis or some other parties come in. The I don't have a problem signing it. I just want to know how it's going to haunt us later. Why? So, so they don't get the grant. Are we? Well, I, I, I just. I, look, yes, sir. You know, we built this bridge to nowhere. Yes. That we've had citizens tell us it's not functioning properly. And one of the selling points at the town meeting was liability. We had a local attorney stand up and say, liability, liability, liability. Okay? And it passed. And we built this thing. But according to some people, it's not functioning properly. It gets hung up. So it's, to me, it's not handicapped accessible. And now we're going to extend further the liability issue, making it handy accessible to a bridge we don't know if it's functioning properly and we got I, I think an even bigger liability issue and I, I you know God bless them but this is a, a trail a hiking trail and I, I mean I'm with you I, I just that's I, I think I, I think we're opening up the Pandora's box I, I and I, I don't think uh, in hindsight it was probably the best move to put in that bridge you know, uh, for thousands of years, nobody had a bridge there, you know, and traversed it. And then we put it in. So I, I, I certainly don't think, based on the information we have and, and the liability issue, I, I would not be in favor of giving our support to it. I just don't know where it leads us. That's why I said, you know, if we sign it, what are we, what are we, committing to one way or the other in the end when if it doesn't go through uh, we can either have I, I'm with Russ I mean I, yeah. I, I remember at the town meeting you know there was several people uh, more, more than welcome to but, you know we, we had this discussion at the town meeting about the bridge right. and somebody was very but maybe those questions can be answered <laughs> that'd be great yeah we'll okay so, we'll, so entertain a motion to table this till we'll that future meeting Cindy will Bring them in as a an agenda. You want to second the motion to table? I'll, I'll second that motion to table. I was uh, look. I see we have an attorney here, and I was going to ask him a general question. You know, it, this is our property that we purchased, correct? Yeah. Conservation property. Yeah. And if three hundred grand with CPA money. So if we create this handicap accessible pathway. Who we don't know who's going to maintain that to a bridge that's supposed to be handicapped accessible, mm -hmm. but it doesn't float properly, it gets hung up, and someone was to get injured. Would you say that there might be the possibility that someone might pursue legal action against the town of South? Oh, jeez, there's a lot of assumptions. There. And welcome to the yeah, select board. Hey, yeah. And I want just a yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It depends. Um, it, could someone file a claim? I'm sure, sure. they could. Of course. Um, it, Is it just like a would, the, would the town be liable for it? There's certain immunities that the town has for against suit for, for certain things. Uh, I would <laughs> want the opportunity, of course, to examine the issue in more detail. Okay. But I, I think it, it, it definitely gives rise to some novel issues of an accessible bridge that's not really accessible and trying to make it more accessible when it's not really accessible now may, as Selectman D.D. said, open Pandora's box. Why, so now we get to the bridge and if the bridge isn't accessible we're stuck there and what happens if they do get over the bridge? Uh, are we continuing on? <laughs> so those are things that we need to, we need to examine more. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Review fisc. Are we on? Do we have a 705 executive session? Do we want to do that and come back? Since no, just keep here? going. You sure? 
Yeah, Review yeah, fiscal yeah, year 19 veteran district budget. Yeah, that's just been there. I just wanted you to know I'll be um, meeting with the um, the other <coughs> members of the veterans district on February 13th, and so that's yeah, and we will be uh, reviewing and adopting a district budget veterans, uh, and that will be incorporated into our tax recount. Any questions on it? <coughs> and as you know. Um, that acts as our veterans department. We are part of a district. Sweet. So in that meeting will include the new mayor of Agawam, who we all met at the conference. We had lunch? No. Sweet. Two months. He was busy. Are you were you at that lunch? Yeah, but he was quick, right? right. He was, he was your... We try to staple him down. Yeah, you didn't have the work. staples. Yeah. Uh, Westfield no, News. Paper, yeah, paper, paper clips didn't work. Them. Westfield News Business and Industry Journal 2018. Publication is in the end of March. Deadline Friday, February 9th. Did we do this last year, sir? You did a yes, we did. What size? Um, what do you think? Did we do a half page? I think it was a half page. Yeah. From your uh, gift account. I'll make that motion. Tell him I want 10% off and I'll second it. He nodded his head. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That's we appreciate that. Yeah. Half page. Half page. Half page. 10% off that Ten, ten percent off that price. I That's wrote it on the paper. Price. We're all no, good. Yeah. Not the whole does, he, does he still do a radio show? Because Joe's does. been having us come to Joe's radio show, so yeah. I haven't been to his radio show. He doesn't right. like inviting you guys anymore. I, I don't I, know why. I got invited. He didn't show up for his radio show that they had a sub. Oh, 20% off. 20%. <laughs> all right. I make it 30. <laughs> he didn't show up to his own radio show? No, oh, I had a substitute. Substitute. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you, you mean you had Greg? Okay. And you were talking sports, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a grand time. Pavement management plan update. Yep. Uh, the board and I had uh, gone to the trade show, and we were looking at uh, different booths, and we happened to come across our friends from Beta, and they have been working with Randy on a potential time frame for an update. And your estimate is um, 14.8. And of course, it is a Chapter 90 eligible item. And he told us that he recommends doing this every five four, to six years or four, four to five, five years. years. I think, Randy, what is this, four years old now? Five? Uh, it's three years is the third year. So, and I know with the road projects. 2014 is almost done. Yeah, Randy had, Randy had given you a. An overview of his budget and some of the infrastructure projects. So you were wondering about whether or not things needed to be updated in concert with that. So this is your time to make a decision on that. Well, when we get into budget discussions, Randy, do you want to give a thumbs up or thumbs down, or is this something we need to do this year or next year? Uh, yeah. The way I, I, I you know, I, I talked to Beta over the call last fall, and they said, you know, you're about time for an update, and I'm like, well, let me. You know, I don't have the budget right now, but I'm going to be back in the springtime yeah. and see how budgets play out this, this, this year. Is this fine? But in the meantime, they gave me that proposal, which I passed along to Carl. So, yeah, we are we are due for an update within, I'd say, within the next year. We can do it now, or we can do it in six months or a year. I, don't, I mean, I can't tell you what the new plan is going to tell us in terms of the priority projects. Probably won't change all that much. Right. I, you know what? What the what? You know, you got to remember the, when they, we do an update, it's a snapshot of what the road's condition is at that day, right? So every road deteriorates at different rates, they're on their own different schedules. The, the plan makes some assumptions, but you know you, you can't say for certain how far that, that road's going to deteriorate in that every year. Hmm. So what this will do is give us an update of where that that, that road is today. I mean, it, I mean, the real impetus is that you know we still need the money. You know, it's, it's nice to put a plan out there, but you need the money to back it up. And we haven't quite seen that yet either. So I, I'd rather because if you want to put the money out there, I'll find a project with your blessing. But we need the money to back it up. That's that's important. Kind of sounds like we're putting this off for a year. <laughs> it, yeah, because you know <laughs> well, nothing. I mean, what my is recommendations? You know, from the last plan as as a, yeah. as it is today, and I have no problem running with those projects. Yep. Right. You know, we talked about that a few weeks ago. So right. it's funding, funding, funding. Yeah, so those things at the I trade show, we just was talking everybody. Yeah. Oh, we it's did. good. Yeah, but we asked him to give us a price because he said do it every four to five years. But if it's only four years old, yeah. wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait another year. 
Yeah, it's not like we got four hundred grand burning a hole in our pocket and geez, geez, what pick a road, pick a road. It's not, not the case. So. If you give me fifteen grand, I'm gonna put. I'd rather put it towards a road work as opposed to a plan today. There that, you that's go. my biggest need is, is right. putting it right. and paying it. Right there we go. That took care of that. Yep. Thank you, Randy. Another one of these waters. Oh, we never on. had one of these in three I, years. I, now we got I just three floored. in three weeks. Yeah, but what's different about this one is the water commission just did an abatement yes. for this water flow. So this is the just the corresponding yes. sewer part of it. So this one's more clear cut. It is clear cut, but I and I and as a general rule, whenever the you know whenever the, know. the board know. gets something from the water commission, is then they've done a sign off, then the board does one too. Funny, they don't do it when we do it that way, but that's okay. So they approved a $27 abatement. 10%. 10%. Yeah. Because their rate is different than your rate. Right. Their rate. Of, of, of the fee. Yeah, their rate. The right. water rate is a different rate. So their fee. The gallonage than the sewer rate. I get it. You know, I'll just so it's not a dollar. Rate. It's a, it's a, it's a, so there was a leak at this property. Yeah. Water leak, and I think in the toilet. Yeah. Uh, they fixed it, um, and then so what the water commissioner's typical policy is is if they can justify that they fixed the leak and justify how much water was actually leaking through, they'll, they'll abate ten percent of that that leak, and that's their general policy that they've been running with, with you know for most projects for most issues that come up with this. And generally, we've matched it on the sewer side. I believe so. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. I'll make a motion for the ten percent. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And did it? And was it caught because of the new meters? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll update you really quick on the one that's still out there. I have contacted the people, and I'm waiting to hear back. Thank you, Thank you. sir. This is a letter from Police Chief David A. Riccardi. This morning, I had the extreme pleasure of receiving a $100 donation from Todd and Terry Brown of 110 Fred Jackson Road. The donation was made out to the Southwick Police Department with an enclosed note stating, please use the funds where they are needed. Since the donors made no specific request, requesting this check be deposited in our community police and gift account. Uh, I need a motion to accept this generous donation from uh, Todd and Terry Brown. I'll make that motion for Second. Professor Brown. All in favor? Aye. Aye. He's teaching now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice paper. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll I don't their, get that kind of thing. Yeah, we'll be a line item that thing out. <coughs> Stormwater <laughs> funding fire. webinar by CBI and EPA. Informational webinar February 1. That's uh, in two days at noon. Hosted by the Consensus, Consensus Building Institute and in EPA New England. Please join us for a 45-minute informational webinar Thursday, February 1st at noon. An overview of the training services, training series, answer questions, provide registration instructions. And hear from a number of Massachusetts municipal officials who participated in a roundtable series last year. Can anybody... I can listen in if this gives me credit with Charlie. I'm going to get you credit with Randy. Oh, with Randy? All right, I'll listen is it possible to, read that to tape it or cool. just read it closely this webinar on the first is just a quick overview of what they want to give at a future presentation that's fine those are the easy ones to listen so this is just more of the nuts and bolts dates times okay where they're thinking of the actual seminar i mean it's going to get a later date okay. yeah, that was, that was there was a stormwater seminar at the uh, the mma I was off at the other ones for the Maya credits. Right. Did any? Yeah. Uh, that's Did for any you to keep saying. Oh, okay, here, sir. Yeah. I Joe's, a, Joe's assigned today. And I know. Okay. Are you, in a, you, you guys like to attend that as well? Media, no, I was just wondering if, if, you know, sometimes they have webinars and you can go and pull them back up. Oh, like in, afterwards? Afterwards. Yeah. Don't know. I'll, I'll find out a for note. you, Russ. I'll, I'll, I'll take notes. You got it. worry about a thing. Joe's going to take notes. I got this covered. I already talked to the guy from the federal two years ago. He told me. Yeah, they didn't have a booth there. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, sweep the no streets booth. twice. Well, I can imagine why. Russ, yeah. Russ talked him out of ever having a booth there again. <laughs> I think they got hung last <laughs> year. Yeah. You know? Uh, this is from Arthur Lawler, building inspector. 
We are planning to go live with e-permitting on February 20th. <coughs> Yay. In speaking with the building departments of other towns, it's become clear that not everyone will want to, want to or be able to use the system. To that end, there is usually a charge for staff to take a paper application over the counter and enter in the system. I am therefore sending this request for your approval to add $20 to the permit fee for each permit application which is taken over the counter and put into the electronic permitting system by staff. Thank you for your consideration. Can we, uh, you know, I, you know how I hate fees. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and, and is it possible that we have a gradual, you know, maybe some minor cost and then build it up gradually over the next couple of years uh, so that people might get used to it and um, have an incentive to uh, learn how to do it properly. Okay, so you're thinking about a graduated fee. Right. Okay, what, what, is, what would be year one of the current one? I, $5. Okay. And do the other board members concur with that? Uh, I, I, so now it doesn't cost anything to go. Well, it does cost you. There's an application. There's a you've you've got to pay the fee. You've got to pay the fee no matter right. what. Right. Right. You give them a this paper application. Fit. Now right. it's going to be an electronic application. It and becomes someone a data input. input. Well, I got that input. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So he's trying to say. Which we're trying to stay away from. So. Would it be in five? Yeah, I guess five bucks this year, and then we're going to go up to twenty. So motions made in second. So that's fiscal like year or for one year, right? First for one year. year. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go to 15, and then the third year we'll go to 20. 15, maybe, second. If I could just add something. Maybe sure. The, the better way to uh, to address it rather than an increased fee for the paper application is a discounted fee for the online. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, that's probably the that's, better way to That's do how it. the, uh, so uh, the Secretary of State does it. It, for corporate a, and, filings. And there's a reason for that. Right. So the entire fee is increased by $5 for everyone. <clears throat> to file online, it's $5 less. There you go. I, I like that. So that's a better amount. Yeah. Should add five on to the e permitting fee. Right. And then a five. Well, the, 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 the total fee is increased by $5. If you file online, it's five dollar discount, and next year we could go to like a ten dollar so discount, and then a twenty dollar discount. No, well, so, no. you'd have to increase the fee, right? Right, right. right. So the motion is. The only thing that scares me now is the guy's just going to say it ain't worth five bucks. Here you go. You you know, but you still got to fill it out, I guess, right? So. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, you still got to fill it out. It's just like your corporate tax, uh, our f corporate filings with the Secretary of State. Yeah. And you can do it online, save twenty five dollars. Yeah. Or you can mail it in, and give them twenty five dollars more. You know? Yeah, you're right. Guess yeah. what? You learn how to use that computer very quickly. Not for five bucks. So whatever know. the current fee is, it go up by five dollars, yes. and then get discounted by five dollars if they right. file on time. And then if that doesn't work, go to the town. Yeah, I, I mean, the hope is that they just, it's easier to do it online for 90% of those contractors, anyways. So, yeah. right, if Art's been working with people and educating yeah. them, he does a great job. Yeah. I'm sure that most people are going to do it, but you're still going to have some resistance. Well, you have the, the, the you know, the club, what class was that? <laughs> so you have the class of whatever year that was. That, could have left that. that it is hard. You know, they 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 don't want to play with the computers. You're right. They don't want to. He's got a smartphone the... now. Ask him how to, show him how to use it though. He's got. Yeah, a he's got a phone. <laughs> sits in his pocket. Did some of the Beatles graduate that year? I, I wouldn't know. I was in diapers. <laughs> The WIC. Plus you saw a beam show at the other day. That's correct. The WIC. 338 approval of February race. Yep. Uh, this is from. Yeah, it's a one time. I mean, obviously, they haven't given you their full year, so right, from this right. had to come before you for an approval. And it was discussed last year at this time because he had to come rushing in for that February yep. race. And so, and also, just for everyone's edification, uh, the national has been moved forward one week to June 30th, which we knew about, but so now everyone knows it's June 30th. Um, but he needs approval for the 
February 18th event? J Day. J Day. Any objections? No. Do we need to vote on that or is this mm -hmm. an acknowledgement? I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll Abstentions? I'll abstain. One abstention. I might be doing food there, so. Another blue sheet. <laughs> Reserve fund transfer legal ads. The original budget was seven thousand two hundred ninety. They've expended five thousand two hundred and thirty-four dollars and fifteen cents. Another nineteen oh seven ninety-two is encumbered, and the balance in the account is one hundred and forty-seven dollars and ninety-three cents. So right. they are looking for three thousand dollars. For legal ads, job openings, hearings, and newspaper, rising costs. Oh, where'd the newspaper guy go? Mm -hmm. Rising costs to place ads for job openings and hearings. We need a motion to send this to the finance committee. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who's that from? Legal. The legal department. Legal. Oh, the legal department. I should have known. <laughs> no, it's not Ben's department. <laughs> That, that wasn't enough for that legal department. No, no, we need the double yeah. blue sheet Job for that one. Yeah. A lot of hearings, planning, but a lot of hearings, a lot of land use boards. Holding right, which people now. do pay for, but it goes back into general fund, correct? Yep. So, yep. yeah. Um, old business. Uh, first is, there's no update on the covered bridge since our last meeting. Oh, Ben's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping. Aren't you glad? <laughs> he never got back? Mm. He didn't. I spoke with the chief tonight. I don't think he's going to give us his opinion as to what vehicles can or can't go over the bridge. He gave us his report with the tonnage and the weights and the dimensions. Right. I am guessing from the silence that if he opines, he being the engineer. the engineer, opines as to exactly what vehicles can and can't go over, yeah, never somebody's going to hold him liable. And he doesn't want to make that opinion. And the chief and I discussed that. He agreed. He knows that he only has two vehicles that can go across. He's going to craft a letter to send to me so that we can inform the neighbor, the, the owners the of the property, owners. saying there are only two vehicles that can go over the bridge. Here are the two. We recommend that the remedial action take place in order to increase the, the tonnage capacity that can go over in order for all emergency vehicles to go over. Very well. Okay. There is an update on the North Pond uh, PWC bylaw. So we received a letter back from Chief Riccardi, um, kind of clarifying that if you didn't hear back from the powers that be at the state, then you're free to go about whatever it is you wish to do. So being that we didn't hear back from him from about, say, six months, that's about right. <clears throat> it's about right. Um, Chief sent a copy of her proposed bylaw to us for inclusion on a town meeting warrant. That being said, we, I had and we had committed to a public informational session on same uh, right, prior I was, to... I wasn't sure whether or not we wanted to then take this draft bylaw and send it to the assistant attorney general who approves bylaws so that we could get an advance reading of their acceptance on it? I don't know if she'll provide her feedback. Right, but at not. least we'll, that will have been another step that we did. Well, we're going to run that out is of, the agency. But we will run out of runway, so we should do that oh, in no, no, parallel. No, no, you can plan on putting it on the warrant. But. But, and, and still have your informational session. Here we are in February. Yeah, you've got to have information. So what I'm thinking is, though, toward the end of February, we should schedule that meeting for not maybe not a select board night or as part of the select board meeting agenda well, I think the harbor master should hold the informational meeting separately that would be great as well but we should do that because we had committed to doing that yeah. so if the harbor master holds that we should be there anyways no yes yeah yeah absolutely and then hold another one as selectman no, no i think no. we won't it's need to join. it would be a joint meeting right good point yeah, make that a joint meeting. Yes. Yes, absolutely. One and done. Well, he may end up, his schedule may end up 
necessitating he go into early March. So just to yep, that's right. That's fine. But that gives you April to get it all put together for the yeah. May town. Well, I think Ben pretty much has the core of it already. I mean, he's got it, you know. Yeah, right. There is. It might be a word or two, but you pretty much have it. Substantial. Yeah, I know. But we got to get it. No, yeah, absolutely. Get it over time. Right, that we both got. We already did the sewer abatement, correct? Yes, Joe talked about that. Yeah. Well, I, I, Lee the already talked about the, let's see, the 250th anniversary. Yep. And the social media policy? Russell? This was something coming it's, out of yep, you MMA? Have, it was, we have, um, it's in your folder. Copies yep. that uh, one of our board members and other people had attended the conference to, uh, and people's spouses and everybody else went right. to what. Uh, no need to reinvent the wheel. No. Nope. Policy that we can Here review we and, and work with to, uh, right. similar to what we've done with other. Well, we can double check what we have. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we have, a, <coughs> we have to have the Labor Council review the version that was for employees only. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one for people on town boards. Right. Correct. And then probably have some sort of get together, especially with the appointed and elected officials, right. to explain it. So what do we need to do to move that forward? Well, labor's already doing it's they're gonna review that one as part of that. So this other one I think we all have to read it. We haven't yeah. all read it yet, so we need to just keep it under old business and uh, Okay. And, and very quickly, back to the 250th anniversary since Lee has spent the night with us, uh, I spoke with uh, Senator Hummison, and he said that if our chief administrative officer will send him an email to remind him that uh, he will file the appropriate, uh, not legislation, but appropriate uh, appropriation, earmark. earmark. Appro a request for an earmark appropriation right. for the state budget. Uh, similar to what he did for our sister city of Westfield uh, for funds for our 250th anniversary. And then, um, again, for Lee's benefit, and since he wasn't here, we're going to be sending out something to all boards, commissions, and nonprofits in town, and uh, different, letting them know that we're forming a committee. And uh, we hope to have a, a, a very well-rounded committee. Robust. We've got clarification from the town clerk that there is no limit right. on the number. Last week we, we had asked for that right. to be researched, so, so that was done. We can begin the process of forming a committee. Right. Cindy's wording up. Good. Other old business. I think this is under old business, Mr. Chairman. Is we have not scheduled our walkthrough of uh, the buildings the town of Southwick own that we lease out to the regional school system. Wasn't it the February vacation? Is when you usually yeah, do yeah. Well, that's coming right up. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll send them an email. And the last update I have under old business was we the uh, marijuana zoning subcommittee met last week and is meeting again tomorrow uh, to finalize the draft um, medicinal, industrial, recreational, and agricultural zoning bylaw that's going to be sent back to the planning board. Um, and they're ready to pretty much uh, wash their hands of it and send it back to the planning board and let them begin the hearing process. Um, given the ballot initiative that is going to be on the warrant, um, there's still the need for the bylaw. There may be iterations of the bylaw, uh, depending on the outcome of the uh, ballot initiative. Um, so that's where they are in their meeting again tomorrow to review the changes that they made last week. Now, in addition to that, was there a discussion from members of that committee about a local option um, tax? or That would be new business. Okay. I would think. Yeah. Anyway, uh, new business? 
or it, was there any old, other old business? Sorry. Just to, to follow up on that, I had a conversation with Attorney Coyle concerning a ballot question, and uh, a uh, that will refer back to a Warren article that he will be drafting. So, council ends up producing both the ballot question for placement on the election ballot, which is going to be. Tuesday, May 8th, and then a town meeting article, which is Tuesday, May 15th. Correct. And then we have, I guess, another issue that would relate to that. Correct. Okay. That was something that Marcus. Uh, old business. Uh, last week, uh, myself and members of the maintenance staff, the head librarian and uh, Mr. McMahon, had a walkthrough with the library on the carpeting painting project. There's a few other things that have to be addressed that came up as part of the details in terms of the, uh, the length. Uh, you know, the building's going to end up being closed more than the desired three days, so there's going to be some of those concerns. And then, you know, types of carpeting, whether it's rolled or tiled carpeting, so there's going to be some of these other issues that uh, uh, Bob is going to have to go back and revisit. So we're, we've issued an addenda for a future walkthrough, and we'll postpone the bid opening tomorrow. Okay. New business. Nothing. Uh, this was part of the uh, marijuana subcommittee. It's come up a couple of times. Um, as part of the state law, there is the option for a town to adopt a local option tax on the sale of recreational marijuana. Um, and there is a sample warrant article that... Uh, was sent to us by the chair of that subcommittee, Marcus Phelps, to see if the town would vote to accept provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 64N as recently amended by et cetera, et cetera, to authorize the town to impose a local sales tax upon the sale or transfer of marijuana or marijuana products by a marijuana retailer operating with the town to anyone other than a marijuana establishment at the rate of 3% of the total sales price received by the marijuana retailer. So this would be on top of sales tax and so on and so forth is basically the local option so um pretty sure it's up to this board if we want to put this forth to a warrant article okay. obviously it's highly dependent on how the ballot question goes and and the zoning and so on and so forth but um it's an option that's available to towns under the state law so you want to think about that for, or you want to put it forward? I, or? I just, I'd put it forward. I'd make well, if we're going to own it, you may as well yeah. get three percent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So if you could just sign that off, that it's, uh, I heard a motion in a second. second then that, yeah. we can yeah. hand it over to council, and then he'll have to draft our. All order. in favor? Aye. 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 Because he's already got quite a warrant that he's developed. Yeah, it's right getting. Yeah. Yeah. He's list. even got the list. Look, look at that. We're going over that list today. And actually, I will tell you uh, that. Council and I met with Randy, and we're, we're working on the updates to the sewer use regulations because they haven't been updated since we started the uh, sewer. So <coughs> those are being modernized too. Great. Any other new business? We're going Sorry, to executive to session then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir? We have new rules tonight for executive session, apparently. Right? This is the new rules? Yeah. It's kind of choppy. I don't know what's changed or what's not. I just gave you the three. It was a handout from this Mass City solicitor. Yeah, I just gave you the three that, the three that pertain to the You want to Ben look at it? I want, to, I want to hear it. Let me get this first blush. Let's oh. see if it's what I would use. Oh. Okay, folks, we're going into executive session under Exemption 2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel and move to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and not reconvene an open session. Exemption three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Uh, the suggested motion is to move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and that the chair declare that an open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the open body and not reconvene an open session.
and exception seven to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirement. <coughs> And the motion is to move to go into executive session to comply with or act on the authority of any general or special law or federal grant aid requirement and not reconvene an open session. So that's the motion. Doug Mogan, aye. I didn't have the opportunity to. Let's 